Well, Roland Schumann, welcome to Bermuda. Thank you. Good to be Obviously, here. Obviously, your, your career uh, is a well-decorated one. Um, give us a sense of what you are trying to accomplish here in Bermuda, especially with the youngsters. I see this as an opportunity. I, I didn't have many people to look up to, and I didn't have anybody in South Africa that really came out and helped me get better. It was all knowledge, or it is all knowledge that I've acquired over the years of just you know, researching and figuring things out. Um, you know, the youngsters of today are so lucky that they have their cell phones, have you know, knowledge, expertise at the fingertips. And, and for me, it was about 20 years, a combination of, of literally 20 years of learning and growing and trying to understand the sport and especially my start and, and turn a little bit better. So it's, I think I'm the four, 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 you know, foremost expert in, in starts in the world kind of thing. And it, so to be able to come in and, and share that really it is pretty powerful for me and, and just to share my insights I wish I'd had something like that so for me it's important to be able to you know in turn do that and I know a guy like Julian and you know, Roy Birch and you guys have a history of, of successful swimmers so why not read more why, why swimming for you well I started swimming uh, when I was 14 to impress a girl so <laughs> swimming kind of chose me but it's uh, yeah, swimming has just always been in my blood. It's it's a way to you know, just learn, to continue to grow, continue to learn. I feel like there's there's always something I'm trying to figure out, or always a way to get better. It's one of those perfect imperfections. Did you win her? <laughs> well, we dated for a couple of months. I mean, it was puppy love when you're 14, so you're kind of holding hands, and holding hands is a big uh, a big deal at that point. Now, obviously, you said. Swimming wasn't a popular thing in, in South Africa, but what were some of the struggles? Oh man, uh, I remember my first real big competition. I was trying to qualify for the South African uh, World Championship trials, and it was the second day of the meet. Um, got back home, uh, my mom said, you know, sit down, and she told me that my father had passed away in a car accident. So I had a choice at that point in time. I could carry on swimming the meets uh, and try and qualify for my first trials, or I could mourn his loss and and not. And I knew that if I'd, uh, you know, if I knew if I didn't swim, that that wasn't the right thing to do. So, it, you know, I honoured him through my effort. I honoured his memory through my effort, and it was important for me to see that that in spite of you know a huge travesty and in spite of something awful happening in my life, I had the ability to to focus and turn that around into something positive. There's, there's always a, when, you, when you're one or a few, there's always a struggle of finance. <laughs> and of course, it's well documented, 2016, um, you were asking for help. Right. Um, similar to what happens in, in a small country like Bermuda yeah. where it's not always funded. Um, but, but give us a sense, now we look at South Africa as a major big player in sports. Yeah. How, how does it struggle with a, mm. a five-time Olympian getting to the Olympics? Oh, gosh. You know, there's so many countries that do it right. You see a country like Singapore awarding $750,000 to Joseph Schooling for winning a gold medal. They're investing in their athletes. The problem in a country like South Africa is it's so politically inclined. Um, the politicians understand that sport has the ability to unite or divide a nation, and they like to control that. You know, so. We don't get the support, much like your country, I, I understand too. It's, you know, our big sports are cricket, soccer, and rugby. And if you are competing in one of those events or, or sports, you, you really make a lot of money. Mm. But our Olympic sports, nobody pumps money into it. And then we, we have our Olympic uh, chef de mission uh, and our president standing up and saying, well, we're going to win X amount of gold medals and creating this image that we, you know, we're all these champions and that we're so well supported and here the athletes are asking for, for help, just a way to, to prepare. I mean, I think most swimmers and most Olympic athletes aren't expecting millions of dollars a year. $30,000, $40,000, $50,000. That goes a long way to helping an Olympian prepare and you know, just taking care of the basic essentials. So it's, I was never about knowing that I'm going to retire off the sport of swimming. It was better, it was for me, just help me get to the Olympics, help me prepare so that I can represent my country to the best of my ability. Now, one thing about Bermuda, we produce a lot of young athletes that do extremely well, but as they get older, it, it's, it's choices of work, family, 
and so forth. But for you, what was your driving force to stay involved in the sport? <laughs> so I'm stubborn. <laughs> I'm really stubborn. It was, you know, I knew that I wasn't going to get rich from it. But I have so much passion for the sport of swimming. I've always been a water baby. I've always wanted to be in the water, whether it's a swimming pool or an ocean. And I started just professionalism in the sport of swimming. I could earn a little bit of an income here and there. And to me, it's like, I'd rather, you know, do two workouts a day for five, six hours and, and you know, try and make a living than go into a six-figure salary where I'm sitting at a cubicle and miserable for every single day of my life. I think the, you know, the problem that a lot of kids face at this point in time it is professionalism. You know, they get to the ages of 16, 17, and it's what next? Can I go to the United States on a scholarship? Is my country investing in me? As much as I want to be an Olympic champion, if I can't feed myself, if I can't get massages, everything that's necessary, it just doesn't make sense. So I feel a lot of kids are falling by the wayside because of that reality. What will you most remember about your performances at the Olympics? I, I think for me, ultimately, it was that 4x100 freestyle relay at the Athens Olympics. It's three guys that I trained with that entire, well, a couple of years leading into the Olympics. Darian Townsend was Salaf in South Africa, but you know, Rake Nittling, Lyndon Ferns and myself, we, we trained together, we bled, we cried, you know, there was sweat involved. It was, we saw each other grow. And then to be able to, st to stand up on a podium, you know, with three brothers hearing the national anthem, first time a South African relay team's ever done that, that was pretty special. That was without a doubt the, the best highlight for me. Well, we want to welcome you to Bermuda. We know you have a, a class very soon. <laughs> And hopefully some of these kids will feed off of the energy in which you bring and knowledge. I certainly hope so. I, I love being in Bermuda. It's uh, my, first, uh, my first real day. <laughs> Sun's shining. We went and spent some time on the beach. But yeah, I'm just thrilled to be here and to share my knowledge and my expertise. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you.